The Viking Age seems to be undergoing a kind of global renaissance in various fields spanning from popular culture to spirituality and even some misguided political trends. Often this Viking revival manifests itself in ahistorical and superficial ways, but not always. My name is Rune Engberg Larsen and I'm a Danish historian of ideas, a writer and a poet. I would like to share a few thoughts on how some lesser known aspects are also slowly gaining ground and understanding. The animist perspective. In conclusion, I link these thoughts to a flag that stems from the Viking Age but has been relaunched as a contemporary symbol of the much needed connectedness between man and nature. The Raven Flag. Everybody has a family tree, not just a genealogical list of ancestral names leading back to our grandparents' grandparents, but also a cultural historical family tree that could provide us with a deeper understanding of our culture and of who we have become. A kind of world tree with cultural historical roots stretching back to the Iron Age, the Bronze Age, and even the Stone Age, where mythical time spoons historical time and begets the strangest of children tell the fairest of tales and conceive the earliest of cultures. Not in the sense of homogeneous cultures confined by sharp and static edges, but rather characterized by some sort of societal osmosis in a dynamic and never-ending process of invention and reinvention. Cultures are ever-changing and no two humans are alike. Each of us are influenced and inspired to various degrees by numerous trails of history that aren't confined to our homeland or to the society in which we grew up. We travel more than ever, knowledge is shared across the globe by the click of a mouse, and some of us might even be less foreign to remote places and traditions than the one or the ones we are born into. A North American of the 21st century could feel more at home in the classical age than in the age of enlightenment, feel more Scandinavian than North American in his or her cultural affiliation, and be more inspired by South American than West European literature. An Indian could feel more at home in shamanism than Hinduism, feel more attached to a historical Sami world perspective than a contemporary Indian ideology, and maybe feel more enthusiastic about African than Asian art. However, at the same time they could both feel connected to their surroundings and neighborhoods in several different ways. If the concept of tribe makes any sense in my part of the world today, my tribe could consist of people from different parts of the world of whom most of us might never meet or even know the existence of each other. This calls for respect of those remote branches of cultural history we let ourselves get inspired by, especially when they have roots which other people still are born into and regard with great esteem and affection. Respectful cultural inspiration in the meaning of spiritual enrichment or intellectual enlightenment is nothing but constructive education and attentive recognition. Not to be confused by cultural appropriation in the meaning of monetary enrichment, deliberately ridicule or downright political abuse, which is destructive theft and contempt. Today, the Viking Age seems to be undergoing a kind of renaissance, which a lot of people embrace with different levels of historical knowledge and understanding, and not just in Scandinavia, where it historically belongs, or at least originated. Unfortunately, this extensive appeal is also reflected in counterfactual historical ideas with racist and nationalist intentions even if both concepts are completely alien to the Viking Age. 
more influential, however, is the globalization of the Viking Age in popular culture, where everything with the slightest association to Vikings has exploded on social media, as well as in games and movies that span from imaginative retellings of legendary saga figures to the Marvel Universe of superheroes, often as disconnected from the law of gravity as it is from cultural history. Furthermore, the mythology and aesthetics of the Viking Age is a popular pool of inspiration within tattoo art, jewelry, and ambitious music based on in-depth historical studies, not to mention spiritual motivation in institutionalized settings, as well as more diversified animist trends. One is almost inclined to say that the Vikings has yet again set sail for distant shores in a different but greater conquest, this time armed with myths, music, and merchandise. But the most romanticized tendencies of the contemporary Viking turmoil are clouding the fact that the Viking Age probably isn't the most adequate cultural term for the last centuries of the Iron Age in Scandinavia. After all, Viking was a rare occupation. The word Vikinga basically means something like pirate or sea warrior, whereas the word Viking signifies an activity that might include raiding as well as trading. It was something that some, but far from all, Scandinavians did from time to time. On the other hand, Viking and the Viking Age are obviously established terms in research as well as popular culture, and despite widespread inaccuracies and ahistorical misuse on the internet and in movies and TV shows, there is no doubt that the Viking phenomenon affected cultural history in significant ways, although Viking label only covers a minor part of the content of that era. And, of course, there's nothing wrong with being inspired selectively and feeling attached to specific cultural historical roots as a personal choice. But obviously, some knowledge of the context of the entire root system is both beneficial and of relevance to any such choice. For instance, Central parts of the Viking legacy that are seeping through literary sources and interpretations of archaeological findings point at underlying spiritual relations to nature. Here we find that humans are physically as well as spiritually anchored in nature, as beautifully expressed in Völuspa, the prophecy of the Völva, according to which the first humans, Ask and Embla, are created from two trees. Scandinavia remains pagan longer than most of Europe, but spiritual relations to nature are formally overthrown by church dogma around the end of the 10th century. In other words, the sacralization of nature that has been a ritualized part of life since the Stone Age is suppressed as evil paganism and witchcraft, whereby a universal core and continuity of our cultural heritage seems amputated. The animist world perspective that is characterized by a continuous cosmology of kinship between man, nature and spirit in an interconnected universe is replaced by the discontinuous realms of God and man, as well as the disconnected kinships of man and nature. Yet these formerly imposed fractures aren't as deep-rooted as one might think. Extensive folklore studies show that common people have just been less outspoken and that places and spirits of nature are often still revered as late as the end of the 19th century. But the Viking Age is the latest era in Scandinavian history where this sense of connectedness and kinship with nature is still unfolded in society as a whole and thereby linked to a much older heritage. Nevertheless, the most common symbols that are associated with the Viking Age today are probably the Viking ship, the runes, and the hammer of Thor, and they don't really express the significance and continuity of the relatedness to nature. Therefore, it is in nature itself that we find a more proper symbol of kinship between man and nature that doesn't just characterize the Viking Age, but also its prehistoric roots, the raven. Ravens are a common motif in Iron Age jewelry, and in some cases brooches, so-called fibulae, are designed to express human and animal nature combined. A raven incorporating an anthropomorphic mask. 
As a scavenger, the raven also could be seen as a mediator between the realms of the living and the dead, and according to several literary sources, a raven banner likewise served as a war standard in the Viking Age. Even so, we hardly need to stimulate the conquest of land and wealth in our day and time, where nature is being ravished by narrow-minded overconsumption, resulting in the climate and biodiversity crisis. Rather, we should reconquest the respectful but abandoned connectedness between man and nature. A pair of ravens that are particularly well known by most people, Hugin and Moonin, not only function as world-bridging messengers, but also embody human mental capabilities that can be translated to mind and memory. They transgress the divide between bird and man, and in a broader sense express the close relations between culture and nature that are part of the core and continuity of a heritage embedded in the Viking Age, which our anthropocentric present has yet to rediscover. This is why not only I raise the raven flag. I've tried to express some of these thoughts in the second stanza of a poem in Danish, a native tongue, but with a literary prose translation. Det var ravnens flag vi hejste, dengang vikingerne rejste, gennem skove, gennem landet, over bakker, over vandet, under stjerners himmelgåder, ud hvor drageskibe råder. Af den fortid er vi grundet, af kulturen er vi rundet, af epoken og dens kilder, af naturen, der var vilder, af en verden fuld af vetter, af den skuder og dens jætter, vølvens spotter om verdens træet, ja, af alt det er vi præget.